All right, go ahead. Uh, we, we really should start off with some self uh, introductions, a, a little about ourselves. Uh, this is a very difficult way of uh, uh, starting a committee in the middle of this COVID. And this is, uh, I do not enjoy this type of format at all. And I tolerate regular meetings, let alone these are, these are tough. So I'm gonna make them as brief as possible. Uh, myself, I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, retired uh, little old school teacher. I've been in town for about 35, 38 years. And uh, science was my thing. But uh, my favorite thing was uh, when I ran a shellfish grant. That's what I thought was the best. Um, I served on a, uh, a committee very similar to this, the Pond and Coastal Access, uh, for a few years, and then that dissolved. So uh, I have no vested interest, except uh, I do have a soft spot in my heart for these people that are trying to make a living out there as well as our, our visitors. And just, I'm here because I love the ocean. I love what it looks like, and I don't want it to be messed up. And that's why I agreed to get on this committee. So Nick, could, if you could tell us a little bit about your situation, your background. Oh, uh, was that me, sir? Yes, oh. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, that's fine. Uh, I am a little hard of hearing, so if you ask me to repeat myself, I apologize for that at some times. Um, so my name is Nicholas Barron. I'm 44 years old. I was born and raised in Wellfleet. Um, I went off to college to become a culinary arts student, uh, then came back to my hometown and have continued to live here throughout. Uh, I'm currently a tile installer. I've been doing that for about 20 something years now. So been doing that for a while. I grew up here hunting, fishing, being around boats. My dad's a boat builder, so I've always been around the water and doing things like that. One of my base, favorite hobbies is going fishing. Um, I've been looking at trying to, you know, expand, do something different, give back to the town, do something, you know, national politics drive me insane. So I figured maybe if I could make a little bit of difference in my town, I would actually feel like I'm doing something. And it's something that interests me. And, you know, I kind of got tired of showing up in spots and seeing fences and going, what's going on here? And, you know, why is this that way? And, you know, but, you know, really just throwing up my hands up and being like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. So I figured I'd try to do something different and get involved and uh, see my hand at this and broaden my horizons, try something new and get involved a little bit in the town I grew up in and stop being, you know, so passive and say, oh, well, that just happens and there's nothing I can do about it. So that's why I'm here and thank you for having me. Great. John, on my screen, you're, you're next. Name is John Reel. Um, I have been in Wellfleet for about 20 years. Uh, most of my career before that, I'm trained as a scientist and most of my career before that was in industry. I've always had a long, um, interest in the environment and things around the environment. So much of my recent time, I was chair of the Mayo Creek Restoration Committee, and I'm currently chair of the Natural Resource Advisory Board. Um, the Natural Resource Advisory Board has had uh, some responsibility for coastal and pond access. And we are, as part of our harbor management plan, we're in the process of writing the third one now, there will be a summary of, of coastal and pond access, citizen coastal and pond access um, locations. What I'm looking forward to is learning a lot about shell fishing and shell fishing access and shell fishing access requirements because we were, we were pretty thin on that. And this is a chance to uh, uh, make up a deficit. Thanks, John. Melissa? Uh, my name is Melissa Yao. Um, I've been living in Wellfleet for about five years and I've been a shell fisherman for about that amount of time. Um, and I've just, I've been wanting to get involved in the community more. I was considering different volunteer opportunities. And then when I found out that this committee was um, happening, I 
I was interested. I spent a lot of time in the woods, hiking the trails, mountain biking, uh, paddling the ponds. And as a shell fisherman, I can see um, the access to our waterways changing. So I was definitely interested in getting involved. I'm happy to. Thank, thank you, Melissa. Sonia, I see that you are present, but I don't see your video or your sound hooked up. So I'm not sure. Can you hear me, uh, Sonia? Okay. Uh, am I showing up now? Yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little new to uh, Zoom meetings. I think this is my, my first official Zoom meeting. <laughs> You know, so, what were, were you here when we started that we just briefly why you're on the committee, why you want to be on the committee or a little history of yourself? Oh, great. Yeah. Um, so um, I spoke with you, Jim Falcone, um, a couple weeks ago now uh, regarding shellfishing access. And you mentioned this committee and it sounded like something that interests me. Um, you know, I, I have similar concerns to Melissa as in terms of um, access points to shellfishing and um you know upgrading some of those situations and yeah i mean this is all a learning experience for me as well um joining a town committee so just kind of interested in learning about the whole process and, and trying to do what i can to help great thank you very much um we are going to adhere very i'd like to adhere to agendas at all meetings but, um, and you have your agenda, so we, in order to function, we must uh, nominate and then vote on officers. Um, and we should start off with a chair. Could we get a nomination second and uh, a vote on a chair? May I, may I make a nomination? John, yes. I, I move that Jim Falcone be chairman of this committee. Motion is made for Mr. Falcone to be chairman. Uh, a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand or say aye. I can't really. Aye. John, I still can't see you, you know. Well, I'm voting aye. Okay. Oh, All right. Let me, let me, let me so the, uh, the let motion. Let me try one thing. Did that work? There you are. How are you there? Oh, okay. Yes, that, that's better. Uh, okay. I was thinking who are we missing, but there's only five, and they're, they're only supposed to be four, so I forget about myself. Uh, the mo the Really, I think the most important position here. And it's Come uh, yes, this is the, this is official. What you you have to you have to record the, the official vote. Did you vote? No, I did not. I okay, abstained. So the the vote is four zero with one abstention. Four zero, one abstention. Okay, thank you very enough. much. And I'm going to rely on you to make sure I follow proper procedures yeah, because I've only fine. been the bozo on the bus with the comments at a meeting but never making sure it was done properly. So oh. keep a good, close fine. eye on me, John. Uh, clerk, we do need a clerk. And uh, uh, that is recording all of our minutes and presenting them to, to us and so forth. And I'm not all that specific on or, or aware of all the duties of a clerk, but it's a thankless job. Uh, and it's, but it's very important and we would uh, like to get some nominations for that position. Or anyone that would agree to do it would be uh, a good indication of who we will nominate. Okay. And one other person told me they have no business. They do not want any part of that. So John is not up for nomination. So is this position just recording the information, recording what happens during a meeting? Taking what? detailed minutes because this is, um, this is a legal document, sort of. It's something we would 
and hopefully five years as, as I'm, I'm going to be going back to minutes that were taken 15 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, giving some of you some information that uh, hopefully uh, make a difference and people will refer to these minutes uh, in, as time goes on. So it's important, very important position. Silence is. Uh, I know. I'm like, should I <laughs> try to do this? <laughs> um, I suppose I could give it a shot. Do we have a nomination now that we know this high interest in this? I'll, I'll nominate Sonia Woodman. <laughs> Sonia has been nominated for the position of clerk. And we have a second. Second. A chair. Can the chair second, John? Yes. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Five zip is the thing. I would like to hold off on the vice chair. One, I've never worked with one. But in fairness to everyone, I mean, this is a new committee. I would like uh, us to to first of all review whether we need one. I think we do, but that's my opinion. Uh, but I'd like to look at all of the offices with the exception of the clerk. After we've worked together for three, four months or so, take a look at the chair, take a look at the vi and, and the vice chair at that time and make another decision. Uh, do we want this guy, Jim Falcone, doing the chair? Um, and at that point decide whether we need a vice chair. But I have no ego. Uh, I feel much more comfortable as a worker bee uh, rather than a chair. But I have agreed to do it uh, and so forth. So with that, unless there's any one that that's really wants to be a vice chair, we'll go on. I just, I just if I may, uh, have a word of uh, a suggestion for Sonia. Mm -hmm. The, the, the person you need to contact is the town clerk, mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Conjo. Okay. Because she's the one who can, who can tell you what, what the details are of what you've agreed to do. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll get in, get in touch with them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Louis. I would like to start off by just making sure we're all aware of why we're here uh, and this is our job this is what the selectmen said we would like you guys to do the following maintaining re-establishing and improving public's right of access to town landings rights of way or other means of public access within the town of Wellfleet. and that's our job that's our only job and as chair I will, if we get sidetracked, I will very quickly get us back on track. I don't want to get involved in anything other than that charge. With that said, I have a shorter gender, one Lieutenant Island. And I would like to talk to the members about the issues that were First of all, the one issue that got me involved in this is uh, was done as a just a public citizen. I was uh, pestering the clams down at uh, this in the South Wellfleet, the road opposite uh, the left before you go over the bridge, the end of the road, and that road's a mess. It's got a huge pothole, and these young folks are driving through it with these. Some of the people have beautiful trucks. A town's driving through the thing, and I'm seeing the dollar signs go by every time they go through that. They're messing up the trucks. Why, why is the hole there? Well, I think I'm reasonably sure the Audubon owns that land. Uh, I had reached out to uh, the, the uh, director of uh, the Audubon, Melissa, and uh, she wasn't sure that she got back. Yes, she does own the land. So I said, can we fill it in? Um, 
<laughs> I should have I should have uh, gone to the DPW because I just talked talked to the uh, the director of the DPW today, and he said there's no way it's possible. Uh, even if the Audubon gives you permission to do this, after you've gone through the Conservation Commission, uh, we just can't do it. Liability issues and so forth, that's private property. So that ends that discussion. The only thing that I would suggest for the pothole is if, and that was done, that was not an official act of either committee, if the uh, uh, Audubon allows the shell fishermen involved to show up with a shovel and shovel the sand back in the hole. They'll have to do it on a regular basis. But if they have permission to do that, maybe they'd do it, maybe they wouldn't. But that's strictly up to the Audubon and there's really nothing we can do about it uh, in, in our committee. So that's really not an issue. Um, one issue that was brought to my attention is off of way 100 which is the left uh, just prior to going up the hill at Lieutenant Island, then it's the quick offshoot. The road's a mess. Um, every time we drive on it, I've driven on it, it's easier to get the shellfish over, over there. Sometimes the kind of shellfish I look for, and I just walk around a lot, uh, but it's messing up the road. The people were very nice uh, on the corner, they spoke to me about it. They own the road. They own the road completely. They do not want to shut it off. They see a mess coming and they see their land getting flooded on high tides. But as far, but they don't want to shut shell fishermen out. And parking on the road is not an issue. But filling it in with the town doing it, again, we, they can't. They just can't do it. So there is an option, which I would suggest we look at on one of our first site visits out to the island. And that's looking at the land that is currently owned by the town in care of the uh, Conservation Commission, that something could be worked out. I did look at it a couple of times. There are flat areas. It's primarily for parking and walking down have no idea if it's good, bad, or indifferent, just the only suggestion that's out there to alleviate driving on that area. The other areas were a result of the old committee of Pond and Coastal, and that's when the Lieutenant Island, the old Lieutenant Island way was shut down. Uh, the old road that goes to the right rather than going up the hill. That was agreed upon uh, because the road is in tough shape, that there would be wooden fences. And to the best of my knowledge, I don't have that in print. To the best of my knowledge, a wooden fence was to be erected and access would be made for the electric company and whatever else is out there to work on it and an emergency access. Uh, that area I'd like us to look at because on one side of it is a stone wall, which ends the only emergency access that I think would be beneficial would be if a fire was occurring and the road was blocked and people wanted to get off the island. That's it. But uh, it does look, that's the site that I'd like us to visit. And you decide on, on what we would like to do on that. The southwest corner was a huge topic. Uh, and that right now uh, is there is a meeting the 30th that I would like to attend. Um, but uh, I don't think I would like to attend with, uh, I, I'll put it this way. I don't think our committee will have the time to look at the site, discuss it, and come up with a solution that we have. The other ones are kind of, there's the self, the self, uh, the, uh, the conclusions can be drawn uh, very easily by the Audubon uh, 
and, and that they're really not huge issues at all. Um, but that southwest corner is a mess. Uh, why it's a mess, I don't really think that's important. Uh, it is a mess. Um, we all, I don't think there's a person on this committee that wants any part of that island to be destroyed. I mean, I, I think that is one of the jewels of, of, of Wellfleet. It's such a beautiful place to go. And I want to always go there. And I want my grandchildren to go there. And that's why I'm on the committee. And I really would like to work with the people on the island, the Audubon, that are obviously, uh, they maintain that area where everyone walks on. We own some property out there, and that's important on how we deal with things. But it would be awfully hard for us to come up with any kind of a recommendation without all of us visiting. So I'd like to table any discussion on that, on the issues of the island until we visit, have a, a site visit fairly soon. Anything that I do on, the, on this committee, I would, only do at the direction of the committee. I'm going to ask for a motion. If I'm going to meet with the Audubon or this person or that, I want a motion from this committee and I want to be the spokesman of the committee, period. I do not want this to be Jim Falcone's opinion on how to solve the problem. So when I go to this person or that person, I am just relaying your wishes. I am no more important on this committee and that's the way I'm gonna run it. So if I don't get a motion to say something, and that's all I say, I, that I'm not, that's the way I'm gonna work it. You're gonna tell me uh, exactly what to say. That also keeps me out of trouble. But I can tell you if I have a meeting, I am gonna open my mouth. So I have to have something in there to say. Um, but it's going to come from a, as a form of emotion. Jim? So if, if there's any other discussion on Lieutenant Allen, yes, John. Yeah, you know, a, a couple of things. You, um, you used the word a mess several times. Mm -hmm. And um, well, we should all probably go have a look and see what that means. But maybe you could explain a little bit more to some others what what you mean by amen. Oh, okay. And I didn't mean this. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the, I, what I found is trash is not a problem out there at the southwest corner. The mess in front of the, the 100 thing is it is uh, just muck now that people are driving through. It's really gotten very, very messy. I was out there today. It's a pretty high tide. Uh, so the water was in there. Uh, it, it, it is uh, very much a mess. Now, when that southwest corner was closed in, 19, in 2005, there were an allotment of two to three cars for parking. That's what the, what, that's what the proposal when the southwest corner was, was uh, opened. And I'm reading from uh, a letter from Mr. Prescott uh, to my committee, and that's all the car, the, house, the cars they supported, and that would create less traffic on the lower road because now there's 30 to 35 cars using the southwest corner, and they wouldn't use it anymore, or well, they still use it. And when they use it, their mess, the mess is people inadvertently, they don't do it on purpose, they don't think it's, it doesn't look soft. They're driving on it. And I've seen, I've been out there on the flats for a long time. When somebody drives on the, on the uh, marsh, that scar is there for a long time. So that's the mess I'm saying. And when one person drives in it, it just gets worse. It doesn't get any better. I'm not a uh, ecologist in terms of how long it takes to go back, but I got to believe that's semi-permanent damage for at least my lifetime. So that, that's the mess I'm, I'm referring to, John. 
Jim, I would recommend you go to the meeting on the 30th, if the other members of the committee now agree. The reason is that the, I understand that the chairman of the local property owners association will be there. And their, their point of view could be very important. And I, I think it's I would think very useful for us to understand it. I think Melissa Lowe, who's the chairman of the, uh, not of uh, Mass Audubon is going to be there. I think just yes. listening in on those conversations and, and coming back to this committee with that, with uh, their perspective would, would be very helpful because if, if we propose something that's obviously going to run into a dead end, uh, we should understand that. Exactly. Could we have that as a, as a motion, John? I make that as a motion. So Good moved. Question, yeah. <laughs> we second that motion. Second. I'll yeah. second that motion. That motion has been seconded. Nick seconded. Discussion. Motion uh, that uh, the chair uh, attend that meeting with his ears open and his mouth mostly shut. Um, uh, what is a good one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero recorded. Five zero motion that the chair attend that meeting. That, Jim, just to be sure that that does not preclude our, as a group of five, going out by ourselves and having a having a look at oh. sometime in the in the future. Right. That's the last thing I want to do is we, we want to set up our uh, that site meeting because that's one that I really want to get to. Uh, we want to solve that situation as, as quickly as possible. Uh, shellfish needs. I don't know why I put that there. Um, Maybe I, that was, if there's any pressing thing that needs to be done, uh, I see, or I did see, Nancy, Nancy is. I'm here. Is here, yes. Nancy, do you have anything to add to uh, that needs, uh, I know that Omaha Road situation, which is yeah, where Omaha, you're direct. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, we should be doing a little bit of um, research into, um, I, I mean, you know, what is town property over there now that the town has acquired the, how do you like them, Apples Trust? And I was reading through uh, Shellfish Advisory Board minutes, the last 10 years of Shellfish Advisory Board minutes on Friday. And, uh, and somebody brought to the attention that Hiawatha Road, there had been a petition to put a rock wall up and it was just like in one set of minutes and then you never hear from it again, but that rock wall is there and what used to be a town landing is gone. So I think that in terms of the value of access out to uh, all the Indian Neck farms and wild shellfishing areas, um, I'd like to, you know, look at what is public town land and how might we work together with the Field Point um, Homeowners Association to continue to enjoy the access that we have enjoyed on Omaha to date. So I'd like to work in partnership with them and, and um, you know, perhaps now that the town is an actual abutter, um, maybe we could try and do some sort of an easement because it's the only way for us to arrive to our town land and in exchange perhaps we could help with the maintenance of the road because they do invest money every year in regrading that road uh, because Sewell's gutter being right there it does and with all the traffic honestly um, you know the year-round traffic of um, trucks and trailers um, it does it does take a beating so um, I've met with a couple of people from the organization and I feel like we have, um, you know, some ideas to how to move forward in partnership with them. But I think it's something that, you know, we should keep as a priority. Nancy, thank you. You're welcome. NRAB status and action. John, I'm not sure why that's there. In well, helping to uh, present this thing, 
you uh, I noticed that was uh, there for current issues. You want to relate about yeah, that? Yeah, I'll, I'll give people a little uh, background. Uh, the Natural Resource Advisory Board has been involved with uh, coastal and pond access issues since the mid 90s. And at that time, um, that was the uh, that was the time of the first harbor management plan. We're working on the third one now. That was the first one. And there was a gentleman called Echeverria, who was a scholar. I, I think he had retired from Harvard. And he went through a lot of town history and made a list of all the town access points, landings and ways to the water for, for um, the harbor, for to Cape Cod Bay, for the ponds, to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, you can see a copy of that on the NRAB website. It's uh, there, we have a little library there and it's Appendix B, it's called Appendix B. Um, but if you want to have a look, it, it's, it's kind of fascinating. What, what we're in the process of doing right now is um, upgrading that because um, some of the ways to the water have disappeared. Some uh, have been have been uh, changed, and uh, we would I would bring that to this then to this committee once NRAB has approved it as a as a working document to for you to consider and. We, you to consider, we all to consider and, and see what future steps uh, we want to take. Um, one thing I would, just one final thing I would say, when we think about the ability for citizens to, to access the water, this is leaving aside shell fishing, but uh, s swimming, walking, uh, boating, um, there are a number of other organizations in town which have a role here in, in terms of boating the, the um, harbor master and the, there's a marina advisory board. Uh, the National Seashore, there's a tremendous amount of land um, that they own and access points uh, on the ocean, on ponds, um, on the harbor, on the bay, um, Mass Audubon, and I would particularly suggest um, at some point going to the Wealthy Conservation Trust and looking at their website because they have a tremendous amount of property, much of which, most of which is water oriented. And they, they um, have a set of trails, um, places to, for people to go and just enjoy our, our harbor and our, our countryside. So, um, what you should look for NRAB is some is a report, and uh, but we're our report is only going to be about town stuff, because we're a town committee, and that's why I mentioned these other um, other groups that are that are worth uh, keeping in mind. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, John. I have a I have a quick question. Um, the I haven't seen I don't think I've seen the Echeveria. Is that was that his name, John? Yes. I haven't, I haven't seen that, but I've seen the Irene Payne and we tried as a department, we went through the entire Irene Payne mm -hmm. uh, document and put them into GPS. Um, so that was town ways to water, I believe. And so how is that document different from the Echeveria one that you were just talking about? I, I, the last time I looked at Irene Payne was Oh, pushing 10 years ago. And I just got from Ryan Curley, I got a version of it, which is commu com computer compatible. So if I could defer the answer to that, let me go look at it and then I'll, I will give you an answer. Let's I just want to make sure that as a department, we're also cataloging, we're not missing anything. Yeah. I want to make sure we, we, we get everything onto our GPS just so that we, I mean, it, it's all going to play into the whole um, right. discussion here, of course. And if, if I could bounce that question over to Jim. Jim, I think I forwarded to you the document I got from Ryan and, and 
Um, do other members of the committee have that? If not, I'll send it to them. I think I sent that to them. I thought I, I do, EPA. but maybe not. Uh, I sent them a bunch. I tried to send them just about everything you sent me. Yeah, I believe I got that. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a fascinating piece of work, and it's it's. I'm, I'm I certainly would look forward to going back and. Um, refreshing myself about it. Good morning. All right. Thank you. Moving on. Um, is there a need to notify pertinent committees that uh, we are established, that we're up and running? The reason I say that is uh, NRAB, I mean, I'm on it, John's the chair, uh, we're aware that this committee is now formed, but it, they had the charge of, of uh, the access issues. A large access issue, which I did not discuss at all, is, is going on right now uh, with the boathouse. Uh, and I thought that issue was kind of over and done, but it isn't. And that's being taken up by the Open Space Committee. Now, with that information, should we be notifying them that, that we will be doing the, uh, this work? Uh, I, they've done an awful lot of work. Uh, would they just proceed and then notify us to their findings? What's the pleasure of the committee on that as far as notification of pertinent committees? Do we notify the chair of the open space committee and let him know we're in business? We'll just allow them to continue their negotiations uh, and then present it to us as a finding or a recommendation, or do we take what they've done and uh, work on that? Any comments from the members? Well, I think we need to be on the same page because if we're looking at the southwest corner of Lieutenant Island and they're having issues on essentially what would be the northeast corner of Lieutenant Island, whatever committees need to be on the same page, I don't think we could be making decisions for the south side and having another committee making or negotiating with the same governing body, making a separate set of decisions on another side of the island that's just gonna to lead to more confusion down the road because then what happens if those two decisions become in conflict? Who's in charge? So in my mind, we either have to then, if they're already up and running, you would have to, I hate to say it, but defer both to them or you then have to say, okay, this is our jurisdiction. We need to take what you guys are doing and sorry to butt in like this, but then we have to take that because we're working on this other part and I don't see how you can have a one committee working on one part of the island and another on the other. That just doesn't make any sense to me. That's a good point. Yeah, I think that makes sense that we should probably be in communication with another committee working on similar interests. What do you think about uh, who's going to do the work now? Would they remain do in your opinion? Would they remain the, the people doing the work or would we take over? Oh, I see. That's, I think, what Nick was, uh, that, see, the, that we should, uh, we, we do want to be on the same page on both of these negotiations. Um, yeah, I mean, it, to, I guess- We don't have to decide today at all. This is something I, we, we really uh, have got to discuss. And, and I, we stack. Um, I mean, to me, part of it would depend on how far along they are in their negotiations. I mean, if they're 75% done with the project that they're working on, it does seem kind of like chest thumping, you know, kind of come in, well, we're going to take over and do this because we have something over here. So to me, it, 
again, I'm new to the whole town politics thing. So some of this stuff is a little overwhelming to me, but yeah, I don't see, we at least got to get in contact with them so that we can get all the information that they have so that when we even go to do a site visit, because to me, those are two almost the same issues, if you ask me, because if a decision is made on one part of that island, it should be made the same on another part of the island. That's just, in my mind, how it would go. But as far as legally who has the power, that's something that's beyond my knowledge or, you know. Uh, first of all, and I do want to make this clear to people that are new on committees, um, our committee has very little power, period. The only thing we can do is recommend yes. to the selectmen. And, and whatever deals we make, we, we, we have to approve those by the selectmen. And if the selectmen elect not to take our, our decision, well, we have to live with it or whatever. But we have no power. Tom? Yeah. Um, there is uh, a, an open space committee meeting uh, tomorrow at four. And uh, Jim, you might, or others might want just to listen in. Um, I, I usually sit in on those be because of the NRAB uh, context, and um, you might might just listen and learn what they're up to, and uh, ask to be put on their agenda for the meeting maybe after tomorrow, and you could begin to have the uh, have this discussion with them. What they are working on is a very is a much narrower situation at, at the at the northwest corner it has to it has to do with getting a a, a right of access a, a, across a private piece of property to get to the boathouse beach so that's that it's um important but much narrower than than the discussion that has to happen on the south side can you could you could you make that meeting jim and i'll i'm I'll, gonna I'll, try, I'll try to introduce you at the time um but it, this, it went through my mind. I mean, to, I mean, I would think that the selectmen would, uh, I'm not sure why the open space got into this discussion, period. I didn't, I'm not sure why they entered. There must be a reason. There's a long story behind that. <laughs> but again, uh, I would imagine that all uh, access problems will go to this committee. Otherwise, we wouldn't be working. Uh, and if the selectmen don't do otherwise, uh, I don't believe that would be uh, fair to anyone. I mean, uh, they, we can't have one, two, three, four me uh, uh, committees working on access. <laughs> it just would, it wouldn't be good. But at the same time, I, I would, I feel very odd to go in, all right, guys, uh, you've, you've done enough work, thanks. You got it just about done. We'll take over. I, it's, a, it's not a good, I, I well, don't feel, that's I why feel I, about that. That's why I suggested first to go listen and, and uh, don't have anything substantive to say until the meeting after this next one. Um, let's, uh, let's keep this discussion and uh, I'll, I'm, I will try to listen. Uh, and uh, I'm supposed to, I, I think the gentleman, I forget his name, who's chair of that? Bruce Herter. Uh, I'm sorry? Bruce Herter. Spell the last name, please. H-U-R-T-E-R. H-E. H-U-R. H-U-R. T-E-R. I requested that he be at the... Uh, meeting that the Autobahn has more or less sponsored to, for ideas on that site, on the Southwest Corner site. Um, I think there's one other group we should be uh, in, in touch with, 
do, do, and that's the Wealthy Conservation Trust, which of course is not a town committee, it's a private committee, private group. Do you know Dennis O'Connell, Benny O'Connell? I, I might, <laughs> I might. Um, it would, um, he's very capable. But I'm just wondering if we should write, if we should write a, any letter or anything to any of the committees saying that any questions with access? Uh, well, you, uh, I leave that up to you. I, the, I would, uh, I can introduce you to, to Denny and I think it would be useful for you to, I, I'm sure he could get, uh, invite you to one of their meetings just to briefly explain who we are, what we're doing. So he's aware of us and- All right, we'll keep it in what they do. So he, Okay, but now we'll keep it informal. They've done, a lot for the, they've done a lot for the town, he, and it's a, it's a private organization, but um, right. very civically to, oriented. We, I have a, a tremendous amount of maps. That's the problem with this online, um, that deal with the boathouse. Uh, and I think I understand what's going on with the boathouse now. The intent was there. We just uh, dropped the ball somewhere on filing it. Uh, and then, but that may be, we may be, they may be at the point where they're going to town council. And, uh, and as far as our committee, uh, I'm not going to stay on and beat something to death. We're going to go so far and then it's out of our hands. Then we say, uh, we need an, an opinion from town council. And then I report to the select board, uh, guys, either, this is it. People don't want to give the land. We want to get there. What do you want to do about it? But it's going to be their decision uh, on on what they're going to do with access. All right. Uh, I would like to, again, I would like to keep these under an hour. Um, our next meeting, I would like to be in. I'd like this to be because this was just more or less introducing. I'd like to to meet after our site visit. And the site visit, I assume I, you did get, can you see this? The, the map of Lieutenant Island. This is the Southwest corner. Can, that, can you even see that? Anyone? I can no? see it, but I ha it helps that I know what it is. Oh, okay. Well, let's forget that. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the ones that I sent from the assessors. Now these look good. It looks like Southwest corner. What a piece of cake that is. There's a nice straight road, and there's a turnaround, and there's a big wide space for the ocean. Well, it's not the way it really is on the map. Um, but that's what we'll be working with. And I'm gonna ask you to take before all of the maps. I sent you five maps on Lieutenant Island. Uh, at our site meeting, and we'll work from those. I would like everyone there, but I understand people do work for a living. Uh, they're not all retired. <laughs> it's, uh, um, the tides are an issue because where we're going, it kind of has to be, it doesn't have to be low tide. It can be a, a couple hours after low tide. Um, but the people that, as I said, when, when you people started signing up, uh, the people that work for a living kind of dictate what time our meetings are gonna be. Because John and I are very flexible. The only thing I worry about is doctor appointments. That's it. So, um, site. I'd like to get out next week to, uh, is there any day that's better than How about we say next week, but no one has a tide calendar. With them. That's what it kind of revolves around. Uh, the one that's going to take the most time is, I mean, the pothole, we know what that's all about. Uh, I'd like us to, to go directly to the Southwest corner and get a feel for what we'd like to do. It'd be nice to have a feel before we make any vote or anything, just a feel for what we're going to do out in that southwest corner prior to the meeting. That would help a lot, uh, I think. Uh, and if 
we're on the same page as the Audubon, uh, that that would be that would be make life a lot easier. I mean, I will be. I'm very honest. If I see a dead end, I'm going to tell you, and there's some dead ends at that corner for us getting access to the ocean or to the bay. But we'll see that when we get there. And you'll decide for yourself. Uh, the nice thing we have is a conservation commission a committee, and they keep us <coughs> from wrecking the place with our brainstorms. And that's important. I mean, we may come up with a great idea that we're going to zip out there, have access, and in turn, we'll mess things up. And they're going to keep us very honest. And I am very grateful that they're, they're willing to do that. So I will be in touch with you asking for a day and a time that uh, the three worker bees would like to go out next week to the island. I would say probably take us a good, a good hour to, uh, I've got it, I'm gonna have it staked out a little, showing the actual, bound, the real boundaries of where things are a little bit, if I can get out there working. Uh, I, I've got a little bit done already, just so you can get an idea. Is that okay with everyone? Any other actions we need? Any other comments from, and I feel, I didn't, I should have stated at the beginning, well, I wasn't chair. Uh, again, we represent the community. The community is sitting out in the audience. I see there's, there's some good interest here from looking over there. If anyone has a question, uh, I think I can see you raise your hand. Uh, Courtney showed me how to do that. Or butt in, or just say, you know, you want, feel free to join in at any time. You have a question, you have a comment, you didn't like something you heard, or you liked something you heard, we're just here to, uh, to do a job for the people, for you guys. All right, with that said, uh, motion to adjourn. So Thank moved. You. Second, adjourn. Thank you very much, people.